It does not disappoint over here. Look at how pretty everything looks. So we're back at it again with another Build Biology. This time, our guest, he's a legend in drag racing. Absolute legend. He's an amazing fabricator. He's the most winning drift team in Formula Drift history right now. We'll just let him speak for himself. This is Steph Papadakis. Hello. What's hey up, man, Dan? how are you? I'm good, how yeah. High fives. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, pleasure to have you on here. What are we standing next to right now? So this is a 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback. That's what it started life as. I mean, we've basically- but Steph, yeah, it's 2018. I know. Toyota had a couple of these pre-production cars. They gave one of the cars to our team to then build into a, a drift car. Um, normally it's front wheel drive, but our specialty is uh, rear wheel drive conversions. It looks amazing. So is this more of what we're going to see from the factory? Or is this all custom wide body bumpers? Well, this is a carbon fiber hood. Mm -hmm. um, but like the shape of that and the, the front bumper is actually factory. The roof line, even though this one's carbon fiber. Um, the main modified parts are the, the, the fenders, the rockers, you know, the rear quarter panel. And then we have a TRD aftermarket wing that they'll have available for the stock car. What, what all is carbon? What is metal? The doors are actually metal. Really? So because we built this car in such a tight time frame, three and a half months, uh, we had to pick our battles on what we would build composite. So like, for instance, the hood is all carbon. But what we do is when we build this car, we unspot weld the stock hood. Hmm. And we actually brought that down to Reese Millen's place. And he laid in and built us a carbon fiber hood using the stock metal hood as a mold. And then we go and bond that back on uh, to the factory car. That's incredible. Well, I know you just came off of a victory, so the debut is feeling pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, so, you know, not in our wildest dreams that we thought we, we could start with a, a stock car in, in basically December and have a winning car by April. Um, in December. Yeah. I'd, I'd be worried about testing at that point. Like, <laughs> let's, let's see if we can get testing in December, but they got the car in December, assembled it, won the first round. That's incredible, man. Yep. And, you know, some people will ask, like, why didn't, you, why didn't Toyota just get you just the body, right? Why did they give you a whole car? Because the bodies are not available. They only had a couple of cars. And yeah. so we, that's how we always start with these. What are these big boys? Yeah, so Motegi Racing builds these for us. This is their new wheel, and, and they actually build these here in, uh, in California, in Buena Park. They start with a forge center and machine it out to this, this, uh, this cool crazy. mesh pattern. Yeah. Almost and then uh, they, they assemble it with the offset that we want, and then this crazy gold paint. A lot, a lot of the time you talk about body kits, right? And mm -hmm. that's like the tuner market, but what we're doing here is we're actually creating whole new body panels. So it looks like an over fender, but the reality is like this quarter panel is one piece all the way from down here all the way to up here. If you get close, oh, you can actually really? see a seam. Yep. Wow, yeah, I can see that here, but, yep. but this is all integrated it's together. All, it's all together. With these drift cars, they can get hit, and so we don't have to go to the body shop and fix them. Mm -hmm. We actually cut off the stock quarter panel, and it's kind of cut like this underneath, and this lays on top of the factory sheet metal, and it's got a few rivets that holds it on. So, so this would be open under here? Yes. Wow. Right. Okay. Yep. We, we cut these basically to the limit of what the rules allow. Yeah. And then we put carbon panels. That's, that's incredible. And, and the door still opens in the rear? Yeah. So, the, okay. so this fender's all one piece here. Mm -hmm. And then it's got an over piece here that fits on the, gotcha. the door. Okay. And the doors are still uh, steel, but we cut them all out. And this, we do an aluminum panel here. So just yeah, so that's it, really nice. it looks nicer. Yeah. Is that all bead rolled then? Yep. Yeah. It's that's a really cool. thin piece of uh, aluminum bead rolled mm -hmm. and then uh, powder coated. That looks really nice. Let's move into the rear here. What you got going on in the boot? Now, how easy is this to take off in, in case of a crash? It looks like everything's pretty integrated, it's, but it's also flexible. Yeah, so 
most of the stuff zip tied. Yeah. Back in the days, we we back in the days we would use like Zeus's and all these like trick fasteners. Mm -hmm. You get hit and nothing lines Gone. up anymore. Yeah. So we just do we do like more crazy brackets and then we'll zip tie to that. Let's take a look again. Inside. Carbon fiber uh, hatch here. Wow. Still with shocks though. Oh, the shocks still support it. <laughs> so uh, back here, I mean, some obvious stuff. Well, it's not that obvious, maybe. It's, no, it's that's definitely the, not obvious. That's the radiator. Yeah. So the radiator is mounted in the rear, and we try to get more weight in the rear for more rear grip, and then as low as possible for a lower center of gravity. It's all separated through like a, a, a basically a rear firewall sure. to keep the cooling system away, you know, from the driver. And, and that's that's almost directly where the back seats are. Yeah. There's. Pretty can't close. sit in the back anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so the fuel cell is back here. Mm -hmm. This tank right here is for the cooling system. So this is where we fill the cooling system and it constant bleeds. So the one line comes from the engine, yeah. from the highest point of the engine, and then the other line comes from the highest point of the radiator here. Okay. So it's always constant bleeding. This is the overflow mm -hmm. um, for the cooling system. And this is the uh, breather tank for the, the dry sump oiling system. Gotcha. And if you look close, you might so see some zip back. ties right here. Here's one holding oh, yeah. on the rear bumper. Gotcha. Yeah, you can see down in there all that, that tube work. Oh, here's another zip tie. <laughs> A couple of yeah. them. Even the tail light, yeah. Yeah. Reason for the radiator lying flat like that? Uh, we want the radiator lying flat to get the lower center Just of gravity. Just the lower center of gravity? Yep. And, and it's pulling air from the bottom then? Correct. Like there's a so the it, hole in the bottom. Air comes from the bottom of the car, and yeah. it's a puller fan. And yeah. then it basically then brings all the air back here and then out and then these out little vent holes and okay. stuff. Yeah. So I mean, traditionally, what I see is guys doing scoops from the top yep. and coming down through the bottom yep. instead of coming underneath the car. But I mean, it's like a plane wing almost. So you you want some to rush underneath the car as well. But these cars are drifting, and there's dirty air everywhere. Like we want to <laughs> yeah. think we know what we're doing with aerodynamics. The fact of the matter is that unless you have all the smooth panels everywhere, right. it's just turbulent air all just over the turbulent. place. Yeah. Yeah. So basically for you, it's just more of a weight displacement. Yeah. So, and then let's see the big adjustment sway bar here. Yeah. So we're out of space underneath. So we mounted the sway bar up here and um, we have a few different holes for adjustment and we can also change the different thickness sway bars. And if we want to get it out, we can actually we push it out that little hole a little bit. Oh, wow. Yep. This here? And then uh, it'll actually come out okay. just like right here. So you here. just you push it out through here and just then weave it up. Exactly. Gotcha. Yep. That's pretty cool. That's a slick setup. It's kind of difficult to see in here. It's pretty dark, but the bash bar is pretty nice as well. Well, see, so it's got a little kink in it already. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody put it on the wall, I guess. Let's take a look inside. Let's see what we can. So we've got this all ducted. This is where the radiator sits. And that's all aluminum as well? Yes. That's yeah. pretty cool. I like all the bead work. <laughs> and if nice. you look behind the driver's seat, you'll see his little Parker pumpers, like a helmet air pump. Yeah. So that's what that big tube pulls from the roof. If you look at the top, the, there's a NACA duct. Oh yeah, NACA duct right here. And that's gonna give him fresh air? Yep. That's cool. And then behind the passenger seat is the nitrous bottle hiding down there. Oh yeah. Always gotta sneak that nitrous in. And then what has changed up front here? How about this? I say what's not changed. <laughs> we have part of the stock dash. Yeah. That's it. Everything else Just is gone. Just part of the stock yeah, dash. Yeah, the pedals are gone, the air conditioning, the heater, everything else is gone. And we've replaced it with all racing components. Yeah, the whole pedal assembly. So we use a drive-by wire pedal. So the pedal is actually just electronic. There's yeah. no actual throttle cable. That goes into the AEM Infinity ECU. Yep. And then the, the, the throttle body is also drive-by wire. Everything's drive-by wire. Gotcha. There's no cables anymore. And then the brake pedal runs off of two master cylinders. Mm -hmm. And then the driver can change the bias with a little knob that's on the, the center console over there. That little black knob there. Yep, exactly. And then standard clutch pedal. Yeah. You know. So the whole steering column has been rebuilt and mm -hmm. we, we try to make it really stiff. We machine this tube and we put a needle bearing in there. Okay. So it's all really low friction yeah. because these steering wheels are flying around each yeah, way, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we want to make sure that the steering column is as little friction as possible. Right. And it's a really cool quick release. It's a, there's zero play. All the play that you see is, is, is the the actual, yeah, there's you no play. Can see when, he's, when he's moving that little bit, I mean, that's, the steering that's all in too. the tire, so. Yeah, so there's no splines on this. It's actually, 
like this oh, trick. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like a trick uh, well, I've never wedge seen that. shape. The dash, let's, let's turn the sucker on and I can show you uh, the keypad. So the way the electronics work, it's, it's very modern. There's no relays, there's really? no fuses. Everything is through a thing called a MoTeC PDM, mm -hmm. a power distribution module, and it's all solid state components. So back here. I don't know, have you ever been here before? You might regret telling me how to turn this nah, on. Nah, it's okay, everybody can know. <laughs> so this is uh, like a master kill. This is the only thing that's an actual physical switch mm -hmm. um, because we want to make sure that we can disconnect everything. So that turns the main, it basically hooks the battery up, yeah. right? So go ahead and press the ignition and then watch the dash. Ooh. Ooh, Papa Doc is racing, snuck that one in there yeah. too. This yeah, dash yeah. can log everything happening on the, the car. Yeah. So, of course, that engine RPM and throttle and boost and all those things. But the PDMs, the ones that handle the, the power distribution, they'll tell you, you can log, oh, the fuel pump is at 12 amps. Yeah. Fuel pump two is also at 12 amps. The radiator fan is on. Wow. So you can look back at logs and you can see what all of your your radiator fan and everything has been doing as far as like voltages and amps mm -hmm. and you can try to diagnose a problem before it happens. Sure, yeah, like if something seems weak, like yep. well we better Or if there was a problem, you can go back and see uh, it, hopefully it what it was. Yep. It's like the black box on the yeah, airplanes. Yeah, exactly. The cockpit looks amazing. I just like a clean cockpit. <laughs> looks great. Let's work around under the hood. Let's see what we got in it. Again with a little shock. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Just one finger lift. So originally this car's front wheel drive, mm -hmm. comes with a four cylinder engine. Now it's rear wheel drive, uh, still with a four cylinder engine. And the question always is, how did you guys make a rear wheel drive? Yeah. yeah. The simple answer is we turn the engine 90 degrees mm -hmm. and we add drive train to the rear. A transmission, drive shaft, and then a rear end and axles. The fabrication involved is we do custom engine mounts in the front. and. Man, that, that just looks incredible. Yeah, that's something that we machined at the, at the shop. Yeah. And then if you sneak under the intake manifold there, you'll see another red motor plate yeah. engine mount. So what that does is, is it adapts our, our uh, Toyota four-cylinder engine to a small block Chevy bell housing, something mm -hmm. like they use in NASCAR. Yeah. And then, that, then we can use the NASCAR type transmissions. So, so what, what transmission is in this? It's called uh, G-Force GSR. Oh, okay. It's something, it's, it's not for street, it's, it's something that they use in like the NASCARs. In order to get all the stuff to fit, the tunnel and the firewall doesn't allow for the bell housing and the, the transmission to fit. Sure. So the rules allow us, allow all the cars to cut their, their firewall a little bit to allow the bell the housing, yeah. but we're not allowed to bring the engine rearward of the stock firewall. Gotcha. Um, so that's one of the, reasons we actually run the four-cylinder engine is mm -hmm. because a front wheel, car that used to be front-wheel drive is a, called a cab forward design. And the cab forward design, the firewall is really forward, right? To get all yeah. the occupants farther forward. Sure. So if you look at where the, the center line of the front axle is kind of about here, mm -hmm. and the firewall is only you know, eight or 10 inches yeah. back from yeah. that. So most of the engine is actually in front of the front axle, right. which for a race car, you don't want that. You want right. your, your weight as far towards the center as yeah. you can. Um, so if you were to have, say, an inline six, you'd be sticking way out to here, put a lot of front weight out there. Yep, or a V8 or, a or anything V8. like that. Yeah. It, would, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, car wouldn't handle as well. So the little four cylinder motor that's really light, um, this engine weighs 220 pounds uh, and maybe another wow. 80 pounds for intake manifold and turbo and all that stuff. So the power that we're able to make uh, for the weight, it's, it's really good. And, and what was this motor from factory? This is, they call the Toyota 2ARFE, and it comes in like the late model Camry, RAV4, um, the Scion TC from 2014, 2015. Okay. okay. Uh, it's all kinds of cars come with it in 2.5 liter and 2.7 liter versions. And, and yeah. what are we sitting at now? We're at 2.7 liter. 2.7 liter? And how much is the output? We make 850 horsepower on just the turbo, and then we have 150 horsepower of nitrous on top of that, so it makes a thousand. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. That's really pushing it to the edge. You've had these in and out in record breaking time for as far as I'm concerned. Like I've seen like, oh, they popped <laughs> yeah. the motor and then bang, they're back out on, on the grid again. So yeah. So the limitation on these has been the head gaskets mm -hmm. trying to keep, we got crazy head studs and trick gaskets and everything, but we're actually starting to flex 
the cylinder head now because wow. we're reaching the limit of what just the castings can deal with. Yeah. So we always have a spare engine and we have to be good at changing it because that can happen a couple times per and, season. And so how, how, wh what have you learned to help you get this engine out in a reasonable amount of time? I mean, because the time between practice and qualifying is not much. And the time between qualifying and top 32 is not much. Boom, you have an hour, maybe two. So the key is when you're designing all of the components that they're easy to work on. Yeah. Um, so everything can be worked on simultaneously. You can have three people under the hood. Mm -hmm. Someone can be pulling out the intercooler. Yeah. Someone can already be pulling off the exhaust system. And you can actually pull the header off from the head and the whole turbo wastegate, this whole assembly comes off as one as modular one piece. piece. Yeah. Same thing with the intake manifold. You can unbolt it from the head and the whole, the whole thing comes off as one piece. Yeah. Um, and by the time that stuff's off, someone could be underneath the car pulling the transmission out. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, once you get the fluids out, the engine's already on the way out. Sure. And then ready to go back in. So what size turbo are you running on this? It's called a Borg Warner EFR 8374. And we run these on the smaller tracks, like Long Beach, where we just were. Uh, but then the bigger tracks, like the big ovals, will run the 9174, which is their bigger version. So yeah. it has a little bit more lag, but we can make uh, like another 100 horsepower. We try to adapt as much to what the driver wants. So yeah. Osbo will say, hey, on this track, I just want as much response as I, I can get. Mm -hmm. And you don't need 1,000 horsepower. So we'll, we'll have a combination <clears throat> that'll give him more response. Uh, a big track where it's, you're just on this bank for you know, 10 seconds ripping it. Yeah. You don't need a bunch of response. You need 1,000 horsepower to keep the wheels spinning yeah. at 100 miles an hour. So depending on that application, yeah, we'll change it. Wow. Just the setup itself up here looks incredible. Like the whole bash bar setup and, and assume you have multiples. No, would you just do the one just the and one? I'll show you how this is set up. So the rules for Formula Drift allow you to do whatever you want mm -hmm. to the front of the car in front of the forward most suspension component. Yeah. So we cut the car off at that point <laughs> yeah. and we have a little tubular chassis. So, so from right here. Yes. So the frame rail and everything is cut here. Yeah. And then we build what we consider like a, a strong kind of triangulated uh, mm -hmm. substructure, like the main frame again. Yeah. And then you'll see the, the, the flanges, and then this is the, the, the crash bar. The, the struts that go farther forward, mm -hmm. these are inch and a half 095. Oh, wow. And the big bar up in front is inch and a half 065. So it's a thinner wall okay, tubing, yeah, all chromoly. Man, it's incredible work. We saw it perform. Yeah, I want to see underneath it. I'm, I'm really curious to see how you made everything, rear wheel drive, the suspension setup, what your knuckles are, everything. <laughs> does not disappoint over here. Look at how pretty everything looks. That's uh, working with a new car and we were just talking off camera. He's powder coated everything. The whole chassis is powder coated. Yeah, so we tear it down and we, we paint strip the whole chassis, but then once we're finished with all the fabrication, we have it powder coated. And we have a local powder coater that can actually turn it around in like 24 hours. Let's talk business about the first things that I can see right now. Let's talk about the steering, because this is what we couldn't see before. Let's talk about the uh, the kit you have built for the angle. Stock this car's electric power steering, and it's a rear steer. We actually convert it to front steer, which means that the rack is in front of the, call it front axle. Okay. The, steers, the, the steering arms are on the front. So, so normally it's back here? Yep, and then the steering arm would be on, on this back. side of, okay. the, of the ball joint. Gotcha. Yep, so we do front steer. This rack is actually out of a, like a 98 Toyota Supra, mm -hmm. late model Supra. We do custom control arms. These are all fabricated in-house. Uh, what are they made of? These are chromoly. Chromoly? Yep. Yeah. You know, this is, the tr this is what everyone wants to see, right? They That's want to see it, it turn. So. That's it. So, yep. Do you know uh, the degree of angle you're getting out of this? I thought 68 degrees. 68? Man, yeah. it looks insane. Again, with more of the forklift look, I you can see that here is directly straight out. And the tires look nice and flat, too. Yeah, it's actually limited a little bit while it's drooped out. If this thing's at right height, it'll go you know, a few degrees sure, more. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. And then the steering, all, all this, everything's custom, right? So this is a full billet spindle or upright that we yeah. design and machine in-house. And then the custom brake bracket and then all the custom brakes, like everything is all one off. What was the idea of moving everything forward to begin with? Did you, was there even an attempt to try the other steering or everything was just, we're going with the front? This is like a sixth generation steering that we've evolved over a lot of the drift cars that we've built. Mm -hmm. And now the cars that we're building are all McPherson. 
McPherson mm -hmm. means it's got you know the, the strut that has right. the one mount at the top, and then uh, the lower control arms just have two mounts down sure. here. Mm -hmm. So once we know what geometry that we want, we just duplicate that on the, the next car, or we'll in, we'll evolve it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so actually, the, the uprights we, they used to be steel on this car; they are aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the same bolt pattern everywhere. Oh, gotcha. Yep. And then we have a, a, a bolt-on, this is for a, a, use a Lexus IS350 hub. Oh, okay. Really reliable uh, so, Toyota part. So start to finish on this, how long does something like this take for you in the shop, this, this knuckle here, R&D included? <laughs> oh, uh, call it a week. A we, week? Yeah, so within the shop we can go from like paper napkin design all the way to like a final product. So we'll, we'll design it, I'll sketch it out, or we'll decide on what we want go into the computer, CAD design it, mm. computer design it, and then we can uh, actually manufacture it in-house. So these, these struts are from RSR mm -hmm. suspension. They're actually uh, S14 style struts. So the oh, bolt yeah. pattern yeah, I, and the length and everything is all S14 because there's so many parts available for that that yeah. work really well. And then we design the custom top uh, pillow mount. Wow, that is crazy. And you can see the different holes yeah. and that allows us to clock it differently so we can get different caster angles. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what kind of brakes are we running? These are all from StopTech. So okay. they make the, the rotors and the calipers. But again, they don't make anything that bolts onto this. So we manufacture the, the hat mm -hmm. for the, the rotor mm -hmm. and then also the uh, caliper bracket. Okay, wow. And we can pull all this stuff off just so you can check it out later. Pull off a wheel for that you. That would be yeah. pretty cool to look at, yeah. So this is our dry sump pan. Mm -hmm. And nobody makes dry sump stuff for this, this engine. It's such a rarely used engine. This is something that we've designed and, and built in-house as well. Okay, looks incredible. From the front wheel drive engine, now made it up to rear wheel drive. That looks really cool. Even, even the cross member here for yeah, holding the, the trans. Yep. That is nice and the GSR fits, fits pretty nice in here. I thought there'd be a little less room actually. Well, so the rules allow you to cut a tunnel Mm -hmm. for the transmission. Yeah. Um, so then we have some room for the transmission. And that's all stainless? Yes. Yeah. It's all and stainless. It back to an oval. Yep. And then the preference to go to an oval is just the clearance? Yeah, it's a clearance issue. Carbon drive shaft? Yep. Man, that's, that is nice. It's really huge. If you check out our drive shaft loop, it's all integrated into the, the chassis. So it's a, oh, wow. it's a drive shaft loop and a exhaust mount. So what's the rear end then? So this is a late model Supra. So call it 98 Supra turbo, rear end. Super turbo. See, so JZ80, yeah. A lot of cars are still running uh, winner's quick change. Yeah, this one is smaller, lightweight, um, and we just really like this rear end. Yeah. Uh, it has more ground clearance. There's a lot of benefits from this. Uh, it is takes longer to change the, the uh, final drive, yeah. but we do most of our gearing changes in the transmission, not in the rear end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then looking at all the suspension parts back here, and it just looks like artwork. <laughs> yeah, so um, we want to try to get as much travel as we can within the rules, and you're not allowed to cut any of this, this frame or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So everything is curved so it clears this once it's at bump travel. Uh, and this is stuff that we've yeah, designed and machined in-house um, the trailing arm, the bracket, the whole upright. So all this stuff is one-off, uh, designed and built specifically for this car. That looks incredible. Yeah, and I, I noticed that when we were jacking it up that this has quite a bit of droop to it. Yeah, and it's got it's a bunch of bump too. Like it'll, it'll tuck to like the wheel. Wow, and this looks like a relatively f small fuel cell. Yeah, it's eight gallons. Eight gallons? Yep. And what about consumption? How is that? Uh, these guys will put fuel in it every pair of tires, which is about every two, every runs, two runs. And I think they put a gallon or two in it. Not, it doesn't take not, a whole not bunch. Too much. And then all the fuel pumps are inside the tank. And uh, what pumps are they in? We run the AEM uh, 380 liter per hour pumps, two of them. So on the scales, how did this, how did this weigh out? I mean, balance, balance applies. <laughs> so it's 54% on the front. Okay. Um, and then was that 46% on the rear? Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's amazing for what was a front wheel drive car. Now what axles do you use in this? These are actually out of the box stock Toyota Supra axles. They're that strong. Yeah. They're putting a thousand horsepower down, but we, we see that all the time on a Supra. Yeah, so, so um, we work with Toyota. It works actually really well. We, get, we have a pile of brand new rear ends. We got a pile of brand new axles. And, uh, and then the hubs on the outside 
our Lexus IS350, and the spline is the same as the Supra, but they bolt on. So we can build the billet aluminum upright and then bolt on a really robust so Lexus. This hub. whole thing is just a crazy bastard child of all these Toyota sports cars that they've, they've released and you've figured out how to put all the pieces together in the new Corolla. Yeah, so we have a bunch of custom parts in the car, but we try to find something that we can buy or get that is already made first. Yeah, where does the idea come from though? You just, I know you've run this in the past, you've done this for Tanner's car, which in my opinion has changed American drifting, um, being one of the first big VA cars with uh, front wheel drive to rear, rear wheel drive conversion. I mean, now it seems to be the norm. Yeah, I've been doing this for over 20 years now, so um, you never know where you're gonna be inspired. You know, I, I, we've, we've built a lot of drag race cars in the past, done some road racing stuff, some Lucas off-road short course truck racing, mm -hmm. obviously a lot of drifting the last you know, 12 years. Um, and then I'll go to, I, you never know when you're gonna be inspired. It could be at a, a motorcycle event or something like that. And I just, I like mechanical things. I get a bunch of ideas just from the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you just Google things just Google and just hit images and, and just you never know where you're gonna, when you're gonna get inspired. Maybe we could, we could pull a wheel off and you could check out some more of the, Actually, the brakes like, and stuff. I would, like to, I would like to pull a wheel off and check that out if we can. <laughs> Explain what we got going on. I can see you've made a mount up here for the top as well. Yeah, so the way the rules are, you have to use the factory or have the shock in the factory location. So mm -hmm. this is the stock like boss that it, the stock shock bolts to. And then we made a little bracket and it allows the pivot point to be in the stock location, which is how the, it's supposed to be factory. Yeah. So we make that little bracket and this is a custom uh, coilover setup that, that RSR makes for us. And we see the dual caliber set of man, those are both massive. They're massive, but they're actually really lightweight. So these are machined on like a crazy five axis CNC. Mm -hmm. And if you look, they're, they're just pocketed all over. Yeah. And then the rotor um, is actually quite thin and really lightweight as well. These mm -hmm. are designed for uh, sprint cars. Oh, wow. Yep. Well, that's awesome, man. I'm glad we got to take a look at it. Very good work. I well, can't wait to see what you build next. Yeah, we just go to more FD events and try to try to win as much as possible. Uh, yeah, well, you got a good start already by being uh, first in, in the season right now, uh, just coming off of your debut with this new car and a win. So no better way to start that. And man, I really appreciate you coming by, checking this out. I'm a drag race legend and now a drift legend. <laughs> so I can't wait to see this thing again in Orlando and Hopefully you guys carry everything on. Thanks, dude. Thanks a lot, man. The rest of the 2018 season, these guys are going to be a huge threat. So keep up, follow along.